Speaking with Anna Burke, Federal Labor MP and also Speaker of the House of Representatives. Anna, thank you for your time. Congratulations on your election to Speaker. Uh, are you sure you want the job after the last week? You no, know, every time I think about it, I'm thinking, should I have taken the gracious office to be the Speaker? Everybody says congratulations and I sort of hesitate a bit, but um, all seriousness, it's indeed an honour and I'm absolutely delighted to take it on. It's a challenging role. You had probably uh, one of the best views of any from your chair of the Prime Minister letting rip on Tony Abbott on Tuesday. Was she right to go after him like that? Look, I'm not sure I want to comment on that. I thought she gave a good speech. I'm not sure I agree with everything. Um, it's always a difficult debate. I thought she raised some issues that you know should be put into the public arena. I think, and I've said before, I think people have found it difficult across the board, politi politicians and the public, to have our first female Prime Minister. Um, people take time to adjust to that. But I think we need to get away from the gender of the position and look at the position. Um, and I think we need to remove from that. And I think that's what she was trying to get in her speech. I thought, uh, you know, her speech was good. I wouldn't agree with everything um, she said in it. Um, but I think there, there probably has been a necessity for her to put some of those things on the public record. Well, on one thing, uh, she's in a position to judge, but so are you as a female deputy speaker and now speaker. Uh, she said Tony Abbott's a misogynist. Is he? I wouldn't use that terminology. What would you use? I don't think I'd use anything. These individuals come before me in the parliament. Um, I think Tony Abbott's always shown me some respect um, and I'm not getting into that debate. Does he? So you think he respects you as a speaker as much as he's respected any other speaker? I haven't had any difficulty in dealing with Mr Abbott. Uh, your personal treatment aside, is misogyny, sexism, uh, a, a lesser treatment of women a problem in politics today or no? I think it is, but I think it's a problem across Australia and in workplaces and in, in environments. And I think it does happen. I'm not going to say it doesn't. And it happens in our federal parliament. And it happens in our federal parliament. And I think the biggest issue is about showing respect for, for women in high office, showing the, the courtesy to the people who are holding those positions of power. Um, and it's about the position, not the gender of the person who holds it. Show respect to that position. Um, so I think there is some difficulty, but I think it's reflected across the board. We've, women have come a long way, um, but we haven't come the whole way. And I think Parliament should be setting the tone for the rest of the community. If you're a politician and you're a function where a tasteless joke is told, you now have to get up and storm out immediately and loudly declare how you're offended or you're declared part of the problem. Do you think we've gone too far in a, in a kind of a correctness response this week or is it all necessary and good? Look, I think, I think we, we need to, you know, shout out and call out where things are said that are inappropriate. And unless we do, then it's somehow given, you know, approval, wittingly or not. Um, but I do think, you know, there is, you know, you're getting to the, to the absurd when you, you know, you want to declare bloke being, you know, an unparliamentary word. So I need, you know, you need to get back to what is the crux of the matter? Um, what is the issue? You know, tasteless jokes are tasteless jokes. They shouldn't be said. They shouldn't be and tolerated. And if you're at a function where one's told, you'll walk out? Um, hopefully I won't go to one where one's told. Um, and I certainly wasn't at the one that's in discussion. Um, yeah, I mean, it, the difficulty is in what environment it happens. You know, you're a guest at a function. You're about to go and speak. Do you storm off? You know, you, you need to understand the context it's in. And, and I think a lot of this is getting away from the actual issue of treating individuals with respect and courtesy regardless of their gender. Tell me, as Deputy Speaker, how well did you get to know Peter Slipper? Um, not, not incredibly well at all. I dealt with Peter on a very professional manner and Peter dealt with me on a very professional manner. Um, I certainly got to know and uh, interact with his wife who was having a very hard time, um, but I wouldn't say we, we had a personal relationship, no. How did you feel as you watched him resign? I thought it was a very gracious and moving speech and he was obviously in a very difficult situation but I was completely shocked and so I didn't realise it was coming. Um, and uh, I just wish we'd, uh, you know, in our public life, we didn't have these things occurring.
Well, well quite. And the, the, the opposition insisted on going after Peter Slipper on Tuesday afternoon. The government insisted on defending him, even although he was gone later that day. Did we really have to have that brutal two hours and 11 minutes mauling of his character and raking over those text messages? Or do you think both sides could have handled it better? Um, I actually couldn't possibly comment coming from the chair. Um, but, uh, you know, Parliament should be allowed to have vigorous debates about issues. Penny Wong, earlier this week, the Finance Minister, was talking about how vicious Parliament had become. My word, not hers, but uh, uh, she was ostensibly saying that. She'd never seen it this bad. Do you agree? Yeah, I, I think I've said to you before and others that I, I think the tone of the Parliament has deteriorated and it is getting more vitriolic and more personal than I've seen it in 14 years. I think it is a bit of the nature of a hung parliament. Um, the intensity is much greater. There could be an election any day now, is the sort of the, the tone and tenor of the debate. Um, and so there is no sort of calming days. There is no up and down days. It's all on this intensity. Um, and I think it is a, a bit more a personal vitriol than it needs to be. Your family's response when you uh, were declared speaker and you spoke to them afterwards, how did they greet the news? Um, well, you know, I think the 10-year-old nailed on the head, does this mean you're going to have to be in Canberra more? Um, so, you know, they were, they, were, they were terrific. They were, you know, really happy and proud for me. But, you know, also a bit, bit concerned it would mean more work and more time away from home and you've just got to juggle those as best you can. You know, I've been in these fortunate situations to get these opportunities offered. I think you've got to, to take them, see how they go and then ensure that, you know, you still have time for everything else. And at the end of the day, my own motto is unto, the, unto thy own self be true. And I hope I can live up to it.